Hi everyone, it's Braylon and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a special ed teacher. It's the end of the school year. I have like a few days left and I teach first grade through third grade. Next year will be second grade through fourth grade and I'm very obsessed with my job. I post a lot of stuff about my job, but but I do have a very good balance. I do not work outside of school usually, and I film videos like this just as a way for me to reflect and process and cope teaching. <laughs> like, teaching is hard and it's kind of a draining job, and so I really love having this YouTube channel to show the things that I'm doing and have a place to reflect. It's kind of like a very public, public diary. <laughs> But um, I'm in a different location today. I am actually at my mom's office and I'm here for many other reasons, but I had a gap of time and I had my camera and I thought, why not reflect on the school year? And I really liked the lighting, so we're going with it. I asked on Instagram for people to send in just questions for me as I reflect on the end of the school year. This school year has been so different than every school year ever. And it's really just what a journey like what a literal journey this school year has been and i just want to be able to one have this video like for a record of like how i'm feeling but also as a way for me to express to other people that you know there are parts of school years you can like and there are parts that you can hate and not everything about teaching this year was that bad but also some of it was actually like really awful so um yeah i thought i would just reflect on the things that i'm kind of processing through and going through um i'm in the middle of the city so if you hear cars or you hear like loud noises or I don't even know, dogs and all these kind of things. I apologize, that's just life. So I wanna start off by kind of giving a quick overview of my school year before I go into these questions and like get to kind of reflect on all that has happened this year. Um, I started a new school. I had a new classroom, new staff, new people, new admin, new kids, parents, a school environment I had really never experienced before, new culture. Um, at the beginning of the year, I was teaching in person and I had some students online. Then we went fully remote for about four months and then came back in person for the last like four months of school. Um, and I think that uh, there were definitely moments this year where I thought I'm going to lose my mind because teaching students in person and teaching students online is so so bad and so so horrible that I like definitely the only way I kind of coped was like having close relationships being able to vlog and have a creative outlet and I don't even know just like really digging deep within myself to like find the strength to do this <laughs> so I yeah I like really really struggled through a good good chunk of this year because of hybrid teaching and I hope I I hope it never comes back. I hope it steps on a Lego. Like I hate it. I hate it so much. So that was my year. Um, but I do want to get into the reflections and some of the questions because I think they'll kind of help guide my conversation um, in terms of like how I was feeling and what I liked about it. So one of the most common things is what was my least favorite part of teaching this year. And I definitely think that hybrid teaching was my least favorite part. I don't want to get too much into it and too much into my school and the politics of it. Hybrid teaching is something that I hope that no one ever has to do again. But teaching students in person and online is like an impossible task that I think was put on a lot of teachers in this country this year and um, trying to engage kids online and trying to engage them in person is so draining and so exhausting and really hard probably the hardest thing I've ever done in teaching ever ever um, yeah so that's definitely my least favorite part <laughs> It could die, it could go away, and I never want to see it again. Um, what was my favorite part? I got this a bunch of times. Um, I have a few, I have a few things that are my favorite. I think that my first favorite is teaching remotely, especially in the winter. I think that it really, weirdly enough, gave me like a really perfect life balance that I really thrived off of. I was able to teach students during the day and then I'd be able to end my school time like right on my contract hours. I could go for walks, I could work out, I could actually eat a real lunch, go to the bathroom, have water, um, you know, in the winter time, be able to, you know, finish work on a Friday at like a really good time. At the end of my contract hours immediately, you know, go to the mountains or go um, visit 
you know, see people outside or things like that. And I was able to quarantine and work from home so that I could go to see my family for Christmas. And so I just feel like I was so blessed from October to uh, January to be able to teach remotely, to be able to have the holidays with my family without being afraid that I was going to bring them something from um, my school day. And it, that just was like, the, one of the greatest things that's ever been given to me. And I'm so grateful that my school was able to do that and protect us in that way. Um, I think another one of my favorite parts was just, I don't even know, just watching my kids like thrive. Um, for a good chunk of the year, we were by ourselves in the building for the most part. And that was amazing. We were able to you know, be as loud as we want and do really cool projects and give kids space. And I just saw all of my students like make huge gains. Students that I didn't know of if we'd get to where we are right now at the end of the school year. It didn't look super promising at the beginning of the year, but they just really worked hard. And I think watching students, you know, we went through a pandemic as teachers and as parents or whatever, but knowing that those kids also went through something really crazy, yet they continue to do their work, work hard, gain skills, whether it's communication skills or, um, you know, reading or math or something, they gained so many skills. And it's just amazing to watch them, to watch them flourish. I'm just so proud, so proud of my class this year. So I think that's my favorite part as well as teaching remotely. Oh, I forgot to add, my new school is my favorite part. I really love it. I really, really do. I love um, the principal. I love the admin. I think that they are so kind and supportive. Like I've never been in a school where principals like know you really well and like come and know your kids, like know your kids' names. Like I would text my principal pictures of like the things the kids are doing and that person would come down and say like, oh my gosh, hi. And like talk to the kids face to face and know their name. Like so cool and um i felt like the organization of my school this year was so amazing like um there were there was really clear definitions of things like we will be doing this on this day and this is what it will look like here's a checklist for this or you know if you need a purchase order this is who you call and this is what it is i just felt like hold on sorry it's noon so the church bells going off. I think just also the organization of the school, like I felt like it was very clear who was doing what and the defined roles. Um, I feel like I had meetings with people who were there to be like, this is, let's go over your case management stuff. Like let's reflect on this. And that was like such a blessing to me because I had never had someone sit and walk me through so much. Um, and even though I'd been teaching for a few years, like when you go to a new school, it's a new experience. And so I was just grateful that someone literally sat down and walked me through what was necessary at this school and that was just amazing and so um that's my favorite part i think you know I, I think something to note is that a lot of times at schools schools think oh teachers want more support so that means they want more gifts or they want more money or they want more bells and whistles and i mean all those things are great don't get me wrong but i think what really stood out to me was stuff that wasn't of much like monetary value it was like the fact that if i had a question i could get an answer and that people were in my classroom understanding my kids and giving me advice and people were genuine and responded to emails and were kind about it and really came and asked how i was feeling and what i was doing and there was no one breathing down my neck being like make sure you teach this or make sure you teach that it was just like hey how can we support you with this iup um and you know, hope you guys know best, like go for it. And so I just think that spoke volumes to me and that was my favorite part. And if you're a teacher who had a horrible experience or you just don't like your school, which if you've seen any of my videos, my old school was the opposite of this. Um, there's always something better and a better environment. And I don't want to say something better, like, oh, there's always something more glitzy and magical. No, that's not what I'm saying. There are schools that exist with supportive people and kind people, and they're out there and we can find them. And there are schools with, um, you know, they may not have money support, but they have people who are invested and involved. Like that does exist too. So I want to make that clear that I'm just so grateful for this school and for this year because of that. And that's definitely my favorite part. 
Um, and a couple people asked if I'm staying. Yes, I'm staying. I mean, I hope I'm staying. I, unless the, sometime in the summer they're like, never mind, bye, Braylon. Um, I'm staying. And I'm really happy about that. I'm staying in, I have the same staff, the same paraprofessionals, the same um, service providers, I think they're all staying. Maybe just one is moving to a different position, but all those people are staying. Um, a lot of the same coworkers, and I have a lot of the same students for next year, aside from like one or two that are changing or I'm getting more, stuff like that. So I just think it'll be really good to be in this school again um, next year where I'm like a little bit more established and um, have a lot of the same supports, but I'm able to just kind of up the ante and see, um, you know, see new, what are like new things I can do. So I'm really happy about that. And I think when you are in a really safe environment and nothing else is like shifting, then you're able to like enjoy your summer a little bit more. And so I'm excited for this to be a summer where I'm not prepping intensely. I'm not switching positions and I have everything lined up and in place. So that is like very, very exciting for me. <laughs> so and the next question is caseload, which is kind of similar to like if I'm staying. Um, this year my caseload was really small. Um, I've been reflecting a lot on that and how that really helped my my like ability to cope with this year and my like life balance. Normally I would have 10 to 12 students in a year. I think this year I've had six, sometimes seven. Um, and that has been beautiful. <laughs> that has been so beautiful. I think my classroom can go up to 10, 10 or 11. Um, but just the way that the cookie has crumbled and the kids and the enrollment and, and the abilities that are present, I'm going to have six maybe seven next year so it'll kind of stay similar um but i do know for the most part my caseload i think one or two might change because the way it is is there's a classroom that's like k one and two and then i'm kind of like supposed to be three through five but the way that the kids have been i've been able to keep some first and second graders so um we have i think i'm gonna have you know first through fourth uh, or second through fourth, depending on who comes and who goes. So um, it's looking really promising. And uh, some students I'll even be able to keep for a third year, I think, um, which is really, really cool. What would you change? <laughs> if I could change anything, I would change hybrid teaching, like I kind of said. Um, I think I was really proud of myself this year, not to gloat, but I was really proud of myself for the planning that I did this year and how I was able to plan my lessons in advance. Like I was able to have things ready before um, the school week started and that's something I'm proud of. So I don't think it's changed. I just wanna keep that going into next year, but I would definitely change like just just if I could the hybrid model that I, that I was doing and find a better method, I don't know what the better method would be but i needed something different because it was really killing me um i've gotten a lot of questions about like will you be teaching remotely next year or whatever it's looking like massachusetts is going to be in person 100 percent we don't know the final verdict like they're still working on a lot of those things but i'm hoping that it means 100 percent in the building going forward i think that's just the best <laughs> the best thing for me and for my mental health and for everybody and so um i don't think i'll be teaching remotely next year. did i ever experience a lack of support or will you know what do i have to say for people who have experienced that in my past teaching at other schools i have experienced that this year i didn't feel that at all and i think part of it was just this was such a crazy year but also um yeah, I think there are moments every teacher can feel a lack of support. Like, I think for a lot of special ed teachers, it's like in terms of resources. So, you know, okay, I'm supposed to teach this kid who's in third grade, but they're supposed to be learning about Huckleberry Finn. Like, but I don't have a resource to teach Huckleberry Finn unless I make it myself. That kind of support. Um, and so I think there have been moments like that where I'm trying to create things or find the perfect resource or... Uh, you know, figure out how to modify a specific curriculum for a student that I feel like, oh, I wish this thing was just available to me, you know, but I don't think it's like due to lack of support from a particular person. I think it's just the way the, the, that life goes. <laughs> okay, so I got asked to reflect on coworkers and I'm not gonna reflect on people. Come on, I'm not gonna like put them on the internet if they don't wanna be on the internet. I have really great coworkers. I'm really grateful for that and they're awesome people and that's kind of 
all I have to say about that. I think one thing that I always talk about on my channel is how like I don't necessarily agree with the idea that your coworkers should be like your best friends. I think you need people like teacher besties that are at the school so you just have people and you feel like a sense of belonging. Great. But I'm like not a big fan of having like really really close people at work and bffs at work because i love keeping my work at work and my friend and lifetime separate and so because of that i think it's been really cool this year like to build relationships with coworkers, and they're all amazing people and i just also love that i have my friendships as well so that's kind of as much as i'll say about that they're awesome people like i've never seen a school with like cooler nicer young people before i always worked at schools where people were really old and just kind of decrepit so i love that this school has like a lot of people my age and they're really really awesome they're really cool and also a lot of people i didn't get to meet because it was remote so um maybe one day I'll, i don't know maybe next year i'll get to meet them but um yeah it's been really cool i'm really grateful for the people they're awesome um my reflections on youtube oh okay so i think every year youtube for me evolves into something or whatever it needs to be for me at the time <laughs> i think that my first year of making it it was a really cool creative outlet to um show my classroom or show a setup or show different things like that and build up my youtube presence and for that i'm so grateful i think last year when i was switching jobs it was a place that was sometimes kind of scary because i didn't want to say the wrong thing and also i think you know starting with the pandemic it was just a place for me to process and have an outlet and build connections with other people and so i loved it for that as well i think that this year it has been a really cool journal like i've been able to vlog every other week for the most of the school year i've been able to vlog certain days of the school year and um p things i wanted to remember and activities that we were doing and so because of that i'm so so grateful um i was also able to just have a lot of sit down videos. And so I'm glad that this year, YouTube to me has become like a really cool diary or like a journal for this crazy year of teaching. So in terms of YouTube, I will obviously keep doing it for forever. Um, I vlog, I obviously don't show kids or people or names or anything like that, but I love vlogging and I love finding a creative way to show everything that I'm feeling. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool outlet that I'm so grateful for. And going forward, yes, I will be vlogging and I will be explaining all of that to people. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm pumped. Um, it's definitely going to be fun. All right. So closing thoughts, I think, I'm, again, so grateful for this school year. I've learned so much. Um, if you didn't know, at my old school, I never really got a summer break. So I'm excited this year to have a summer break and not be forced to teach ESY like I was at my old job and just be able to enjoy my time and travel and just have fun. And so I want to say that this year, I think just like through some crazy crazy curveballs and things i just wasn't expecting but overall i don't think this was the worst year i've ever had but it definitely wasn't fun all the time but it's never fun all the time to teach so it's kind of an unrealistic expectation to think that it will always be fun but i'm really really grateful that i was able to be here and for a year of teaching like this i'm glad that i was at this school with these people and this experience because it was just far better and more supportive than i could have thought and so if this you know if you had the opposite experience i don't want this video to trigger you like that's not the point of this video um i don't want it to be like oh well braylon liked her year so i should have liked it too no if you feel like you didn't like it let sit with that you know that's your experience your feelings are so valid and if you did like this year, like me, or it was kind of challenging, but also had some parts that were like enjoyable, that's okay too, because we're all in different places and we're all trying to cope with different things. And I'm just pumped for next school year where it's like a more even playing field and we're all kind of able to start similarly and just get right to work. I just want it to be normal, a normal year, a normal year where I'm working regular weeks and I don't have to log in at a certain time for a kid online. Like, come on, I just want a normal year. <laughs> 
but yay i'm excited um look out for a lot of summer content for me there's more random stuff coming i'm not necessarily going to keep a strict schedule i'm just going to post when i feel like it and enjoy my summer and my time so you guys are the best and thanks for letting me reflect and i will see you in the next video bye